Hi and welcome to History's Blast. We're in Catanning, Pennsylvania, the county seat of Armstrong County. And we're here at the uh, Historical Society Museum to visit an antique equipment and engine show. But first, look behind me at that uh, old Pennsylvania Railroad Station and freight house behind it. We'll visit it a little bit later, but right now, let's come along and see that equipment show because it looks like it's gonna be very interesting. We were at the Catanning Historical Society last year and went in the building and toured the exhibits and made a video for you about that. But this year, we're here a little earlier in the year and they're having a small old equipment and engine show. So let's go up there and see what we can get into. Old one long engine going up there, pop, pop, pop. Another old one longer. <laughs> now, this one on gasoline or kerosene? Yeah, they're all, these ones are all gasoline, yep. We got a model hay baler going on back there. Yep. The old grasshopper. The old grasshopper hay baler. There, you see how one works. A little little engine that's powering the hand pump, automating the hand pumping process. There's that beautiful New Holland water cooled. The hand painted trim from the factory. Driving a fan. The air's coming out. It's it, it pushing the air out through that big vent. And this is the kind of fan that you would see in a, in a much larger scale. <laughs> in, a, in a fan house for ventilating an underground mine. Except instead of pushing the air out, it would be pulling the air in. For the mine, yes. 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 Ventilating big hen barns and Places where you didn't want a lot of air, hot air and humidity to, to accumulate, or gases to accumulate that might go poof. Yeah, very nice. Did you get this off an old golf course? <laughs> I'm thinking that might have been where this would have come from. I bought it off of uh, another fella, but I would say it'd either be a bigger estate or a golf course. Yeah. Because back then, you know, even to be able to afford something like this, yeah. you'd have to have... Self-propelled self -propelled blade mower and a yep. roller. Yep. Unbelievable. <laughs> so the, the, water, the water's on top. I saw you filling that earlier, and you said the fuel's underneath. Yeah, it's in a tank that's underneath in between the uh, two runners. Oh, thank you. And, and where's the filler? That's a magnet. You can put that on your refrigerator. Remember, every time you get a glass of milk, you can remember. There you go. <laughs> oh, you're going to ruin historical. Oh, oh that's your fuel there's, filler right there. there. Okay, got gotcha. you. Cool, okay. Well, I hadn't been able to get this thing to run forever until I bummed the magneto off the mark. Hi there. Now, are these scale models or. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Some of these machines make rude noises, like this one. Sounds like a hog snorting. Look at the cam. See the cam? How it's slipping up over the cam and triggering oh, yeah. the cam? Yeah. Coming. Mechanical. 
external combustion. You can see the workings. Amazing. So this had been a primarily a gas field engine then for no, it just more industrial or, yeah. yeah. It's set up to run on gas natural gas though instead of liquid fuel, right? Both. It can oh. run oh. a carburetor. So oh, okay. it can run so, on liquid fuel. Oh, so it's a dual fuel engine? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And some were three fuel, some would be kerosene also. So the brass where the wires are coming in from the battery, that's the igniter yeah, chamber? Yeah, it's an igniter. This is insul your insulated right. point. Over here, this, right. it's an arm over here, it's right. a white spark. The contact comes around and wipes it and makes a spark oh, at the correct time. Um, so we use the battery to start it. And this engine also has a magneto. Yeah, uh, and those are real magnets right there. <laughs> which you could switch over to run it on that. Some engines had a bracket with a friction wheel that drove off the flywheel to make the electric. Right. You'd, you'd save your batteries just for starting. Right. You know, back in the day, you either you had dry cells or wet cells and you didn't want to you know deplete them right they weren't cheap back then. yeah they were not cheap today either. yeah uh, yeah yeah okay thank you yes sir so the battery went dead on this little engine and you got a solar panel <laughs> Solar power and old-fashioned equipment. That's, I love it. I'll post some data, historical and otherwise, about these buildings as uh, titles to the video late in production. But right now, I'm just going to walk around and document it for posterity. This is the passenger station, and there's the freight office. Big freight office behind me. You can see the old baggage doors, little freight doors, actually. Herringbone platform. Now the main line with the passenger loading and so on ran along this rail trail, which is set up now, you can see. And then here's a parking area, a place for the mail trucks to back up into, regular brick found uh, brick pavement. But nice herringbone platform all the way around here until you get to the back. And there's where the freight tracks came in. It's got a clear story because according to Chris, I talked to at the uh, equipment show, this was set up so that the cars could actually be pushed inside. And so there's a clear story for ventilation. And if, if a switching engine, a steam engine, or later on a gasoline or diesel powered engine needed to poke its nose in there, it could. And there's steam and smoke and carbon monoxide had a place to go. There it says right there, 1895 is when the cornerstone was laid on this building. And the back side is interesting as well. This would probably have been the local delivery side. There you can see the end doors, how big they were. So you could push a freight car right through in there. Massive beams supporting the roof and security cameras. There's a sign on the station that says you are on camera and there's a security camera up there. So at least whoever's in control of the property, when I, I have to assume it's probably the county or the town, the borough, is taking care of this facility because what potential, as Debbie just mentioned to me off scene, what potential this place has for a venue. Big open grassy area. Yeah. It'd be a great visitor center in here and other things. And hall for concerts and all kinds of flea markets and swap meets. Wouldn't this be a great venue for an equipment show? Okay, let's head on up the road and we'll see what there is to see. Wasn't that, by the way, wasn't that a great little visit to the 
old equipment show. Make your day in Catan and complete after you've seen the Historical Society's Museum with an ice cream cone at the Market on Reynolds, just across from the freight depot. The old equipment show was just a great thing. I'm glad we took the time to come over here from our campsite to see it. Small, but the folks were great, and boy, did we learn something. I learned a lot. Hope you did, too. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll check out some of our other ones. See you soon.